afternoon. What's going on, everybody? It's Miles. Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. So today we got a gear review, and um, what we're going to be going over today is a guitar package from the company Donner. Now, the guys over at Donner were gracious enough to send me this package as a gift, and uh, they want me to check it out, and just uh, they want to know what I think about it. So let's just get right into this whole thing. Normally I wouldn't be the guy who would gravitate towards doing unboxing videos because to me personally it feels like an unboxing video is the equivalent of inviting a friend over to my house on Christmas Day so they can watch me unwrap my presents. But in this case I think it's useful for us to see what the contents of this package actually are. So um, yeah, let's get right down to it and see what comes along with this guitar. Alright? Let's do it. It's a little bit messed up, but uh, blame UPS. That's why I don't do unboxing videos. I never learned how to open a box. music input and three watt speaker this thing slaps all right let's see about the guitar <laughs> pretty cool to have this sent in the mail. So we got a single single humbucker, tape strings, <laughs> oh silica gel. Don't eat these. I don't know what kids are eating these, but stop. So what comes along with this guitar are pretty much all the components that you're going to need just to get yourself started. Now the first thing that you're going to have is this 3 watt mini guitar amp. It's, um, it's got distortion built into it, so we're going to hear what that sounds like. and. Uh, I'm looking forward to finding out what the final verdict on the sound quality of this amplifier actually is. This guitar also comes with a capo, which we'll go over how to use that if you're not sure a little bit later in the video. But one of the other convenient things that are incorporated into the design of this capo is a little hook at the bottom of the handle. So this is for if you're going to change your strings and you're trying to remove the bridge pegs so that you can get the strings out from the bridge of the guitar. We have an extra set of strings. This is going to come in handy because eventually you're going to need to change your strings. We also have a guitar cable for the guitar to go to our amplifier. So obviously, this looks going to come in handy. This guitar also comes with a strap. So when you're ready to start practicing in front of the mirror, working on your best rock poses, now you got a strap to make sure that your guitar doesn't hit the ground. This guitar also comes with a clip-on tuner. Now. I want to see just how accurate this tuner actually is and see if there's any other functions that are available on the display of the tuner. 
But I will say that one of the good things about it is that it already comes with a battery. The batteries that come in these clip-on tuners are usually hard to find unless you go to like CVS or some pharmacy or something. But um, the fact that it's already in the packaging is a great thing. So kudos to Don. Uh, what else? Guitar picks. It looks to be about five, I think. So that's cool. And an Allen wrench for adjusting the truss rod, which I imagine we're gonna need. In my opinion, based on what contents are in the packaging that come with the guitar, I would say this is a good entry level option for a player that's just getting into guitar or is transferring over from playing acoustic guitar and just trying to get their feet wet in the world of electric guitar but you don't want to invest too much money into a new amplifier or all the other components that you can get for the electric guitar. So, now that we've gone over the components, let's check out the guitar itself. So the guitar itself is clearly based off a Fender Strat style body. Um, the dimensions of the body are a little different, so don't go stewing them, Fender. The guitar itself is a Strat style body shape. Um, there's no sharp edges on the side of the neck from the frets, which is nice. Usually when you're going with a budget guitar, you tend to find that there's certain attributes that you can expect, like really bad finishing on the edges of the frets as far as the size of the neck go. Um, we got a humbucker in the bridge, and then two single coils in the middle and neck pickup positions. As far as the bridge itself, it looks to be a tremolo style bridge, although the pack that I got didn't come with a tremolo arm. So I don't know if that was just a mistake on Donner's part. I don't know what happened there. But if you're just getting started with playing guitar, you really don't need it. We got one volume, two tones, a five-way pickup selector switch. And other than that, the guitar is pretty straightforward. We have the adjustment for the truss rod at the top of the neck and it's a set in neck construction so with that said let's check out how this thing sounds and let's check out how it sounds through this mini guitar amp now if you've been following my channel for a while you may have noticed that there might be a slight problem with this current picture and for those who aren't sure I'll let you know this guitar is right-handed. I am not right-handed. I am left-handed, and I play guitar left-handed. But that's not gonna stop us from doing a decent demo of this video. So, before we do any sort of alterations to this instrument, let's first just hear how it sounds with the instrument cable and amplifier that came with the guitar. So the first thing I wanna go over is what's going on with this little amp. Let's see uh, what the controls are, how we're gonna go about powering this thing. Let's check out what's in the box. Comes with the instruction manual. Should absolutely read the instructions when it comes to instrument equipment, musical gear of any sort. It tends to be something that doesn't get addressed enough, but you can ruin a piece of music gear very quickly by using it improperly and it can be literally destroyed with just one mistake. So there is a definite benefit of reading the instructions to most of your gear when you get it. So let's see what's going on here. So we got just an outline of the controls that are on the top of the amplifier. Um, all of the different ways you can plug in, you can plug in your phone for outside audio. So that's pretty cool. Input jack for the guitar. Uh, this is where you switch between the distortion and clean signal. You got an, a headphone jack, looks to be like an eighth inch jack. And the way that we're gonna be powering this thing is with a USB cable. That looks to be what we got here. So if you have like an iPhone charger block, you would need that for powering this amplifier. And it looks like we also have an eighth inch to eighth inch cable as well. And I guess that would be for your phone. So as long as you have a phone with a headphone jack or you have the, uh, the little dongle thing for the iPhone, this is how you would plug that in. So you can play audio through the amplifier as well. And the rest of these instructions just seem to be showing how to use the thing, how to use a volume knob. 
cool. Yeah, okay, adjusting the distortion level, blah, blah, blah. Adjusting the volume. Well, can you adjust the volume of the aux? I guess that is a question. I'm not sure if these volume adjustments go to the auxiliary in the headphone jacks. That would be something to check out in a little bit, but yeah, let's just get right into seeing what's going on with this thing. So the amp itself, um, pretty much everything is on this back panel and it's pretty straightforward. We got the top panel, everything's pretty much laid out there. Nothing too complicated here. Um, now he's got to plug this little guy in. So you're going to need something like this to plug in your amplifier. Unless you want to plug it into your computer or something, which, I mean, I'm sure you could do. I am just going to plug it to a direct power source for the sake of this demo for today. Okay. Got a power source. So now that's getting plugged in. Got a nice definitive red light to let you know that you got power. So that's cool. So now, take out our trusty instrument cable. Having the right angle on one side is definitely a good thing. You could plug the right angle cable into your guitar and then tuck the cable behind your strap. And so then the cable itself is not in the way of your picking hand. Or you could just simply plug it into the back of the amplifier. It's your call. All right. Cable is in. Guitar. Now, the other thing that we should also do is make sure that this tuner is reliable, which I imagine it is. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Here's a battery for the tuner. And it comes with instructions as well. But instructions in this case, like if you don't know how to use a tuner already, then you'd want to check them out. But for the most part, when it comes to a tuner, what you're dealing with is chromatic tuning where it'll pick up every note or you can set it to just be the notes on the guitar or on a bass or on a violin. And so you'll see on most tuners, you have the options to go through option C, G or V or even B which is for chromatic, guitar, violin, or bass. So now you know. So we already got signal from the tuner itself. I just gotta put the cap back on here. Now if you have a guitar pick or a penny or something like that, that's how you would get this back cavity open. Now already, I like that the tuner itself is adjustable so that you can have it uh, facing whatever way you need to. But for now, I'll just have it facing me. Now it's set to chromatic, which in this case isn't a bad thing because it's fine. It's just all the notes. As long as you know the notes that you're looking for, you're in good shape. All right, so let's go through and just check all the strings one at a time. Now, when you go to the proper pitch, it's also worth noting that the screen will turn green to let you know that you're in the right pitch. I'm tuning this guitar to E flat standard for the moment, just because I'm not sure what gauge strings are on this thing. And it's always good to just go through again, just to make sure, especially when you have a guitar with a tremolo bridge on it, because as you add tension to the strings, the springs are going to compensate and give away some of that tension because of the pulling of the strings. Okay, and the power button, it's right back here. Now the power button will also give you the option of going through the different settings that are available for you to choose from. So you can also use this for ukulele. But in this case, I think if you hold the power button, that turns it off. And always be sure to turn your tuner off. Don't leave it on because batteries are expensive. Now, on to the amplifier. Let's see what's happening here. Let's see how loud this thing can get. Because that's the main objective here. I want to see how loud this thing actually is. <laughs> Not sure. Do I have everything up? Aha. 
Now these two knobs over here on the right side of the amplifier, they're not going to do anything unless you're on the distortion channel. And right now we're on the clean channel. Now this is just volume overall. And that's honestly really nice. Like that's not too bad for an amplifier that fits on my desk. That's loud enough that you can just sit here and play. So volume wise, that's really not bad. That's a good amount of volume if you're just sitting right here at your desk and you're just trying to practice some stuff. And yeah, my previous job, I had a lot of time where most of my job was just tuning all the righty guitars that were on the walls for display in the store. So I've gotten pretty good. At playing upside down. <laughs> so that is our neck pickup in the combo position of the middle and neck. You get a little bit more of that sort of like John Mayer dancing, slow dancing in a burning room sort of sound. It's in there. The middle pickup. Middle pickup I like to use for more like country stuff, honestly. Um, it's just got that sort of twang to it, almost like a telly style sound. The position between the middle pickup and the bridge, if I had to guess, is probably going to be splitting this humbucker so that you get this top uh, pickup over here in conjunction with the middle pickup, rather than having the humbucker and the middle. But that's just my guess. It gives us a similar quality as we had previously with the uh, neck and middle pickups. And then the bridge pickup. It's got some decent output to it. And a little bit of grit as a humbucker, so it's a little bit of a higher output, I think. But now, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's see about the distortion. Oh yeah. adjustments for the amount of gain that we're getting from the amp. We can also adjust can also adjust the tone of the amp as well. So let's see. <laughs> So honestly, this amp already, I'm like sold on it. This is great. I'm going to keep this on my desk forever. Because <laughs> it's, it's simple enough that all you need to make sure that you have is a power source and a cable to run from the amp. And you could just sit it right on your desk. Like, 
I don't have to set up anything anymore. Would I record with this amp? No, absolutely not. This is simply, it's strictly for just practicing. It's for having a reference of what your electric guitar sounds like. Within a realistic, <laughs> uh, small enough capacity that you could just have it on your desk. Um, now it's a little noisy. find a way to use that with my band so yeah that's um I, i'm not gonna worry about checking out the auxiliary for now just because it's not really the primary reason that we're checking out this amplifier and all this gear what we're gonna do now is try to give this guitar and even the amp a bit of a proper demo so i'm gonna make some quick alterations and uh we'll be right back all right so made some alterations here and now we have a left-handed righty guitar. You know, honestly, so far, aside from having to play over the volume knobs and doing this all sort of like Jimi Hendrix style, this guitar feels just fine and I don't have any issues with it at all. And again, this amp is nice and loud. I didn't do anything really in regards to altering the guitar itself in order to make it into a left-handed model. The only thing I really did was just switch out the nut. I'm going to be swapping out the guitar strings that came on the guitar itself. Um, I imagine the set that was on a guitar when it came in the mail were a set of nines, maybe tens, and I swapped it out for a set of Diodario light top heavy bottoms. So I have those on there now. And with the reverse headstock, I have a little bit more tension on the lower string. So if I want to tune to a lower register, I could. I'm not going to, but if I wanted to, I could. In addition to that, I swapped the nut at the top of the neck so that now it's fitting the lower strings on this side of the neck as opposed to where it was previously with the thickest hole, the thickest opening being on the opposite side of the neck. And other than that, I made some slight alterations to the height of the saddles on the bridge. But other than that, the guitar is the same guitar that it was when it first came out of the box. As far as playability goes, I really don't have any issues with this guitar so far. Aside from the strings not being completely in tune just yet, so let's put them on. I really don't hear anything that's too problematic with this guitar especially considering that its sole purpose is just to be playable for whoever is sitting down with it and playing it. The tuners on the guitar are pretty accurate. They were, they're responsive and they hold their tuning pretty well. And overall, the pickups on this guitar are nice and responsive. And I don't have any issue in that regard. You actually get a little bit of overdrive from the bridge pickup in uh, the Queen channel. So it's nice and a, it's a nice high output. But I guess that's something to be mindful of if you're trying to record with this thing at some point that it's good for harmonic content. But as far as just playing cleanly, as long as you're playing soft, it's okay. 
I'd still go with one of the other pickup configurations in that case. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it feels like an entry level guitar. And even with that said, the neck feels nice and comfortable within my hands. It doesn't feel super duper awkward. The only awkward quality to this guitar is the fact that I'm playing it upside down. That's a pretty meaningless factor in regards to the playability of the guitar. Because if I could play it upside down and still sound just fine. That says a lot about the instrument. Although, I will say, Donner should probably consider making a lefty model of their guitar. Just saying. Now, the other thing that we didn't really talk about previously is the capo that comes with this guitar. Now, for some of you out there that are going to be going on ordering this kit, you're going to be curious as to what to do with a capo for your guitar. And... The answer is fairly simple. Basically what a capo does, it shortens the length of the string from the point of the top of the headstock to where it meets out the bridge. And so what that does, it essentially allows you the ability to play the guitar as if you had a finger down like you were playing a bar chord. So what would be your E chord in root position? If you were to play with a capo anywhere else on the neck of the guitar and play that chord, it allows you to use the same finger pattern. So, if you're playing something that's in a standard tuning, E flat or E standard, whatever, and you want to take that same sort of playability of what you're playing in that tuning, but move it to a different key, that's what you would use a capo for. So, for example, put that capo anywhere and play the same thing. So that's what a capo does and what's great about the construction of this capo is that you can easily just clamp it down and then slap it on the neck of the guitar wherever you want to position it. Now I used a separate set of strings for this guitar just because the ones that came with it are lighter gauge than what I'm used to playing. It's not because they're inferior strings, it's just that when I play, I hit the strings a little bit harder.
Now, as for the distortion channel on this amp. So the distortion channel is great, as long as you're uh, not being too crazy about it, I guess. Unless you want to be. But in which case, you'd want to be using the humbucker pickup for like the super duper loud volume crazy distortion. Because what can happen if you're using the single coils, that stuff. And that's referred to as 60 cycle hum. And that is not your friend. The tone knob is... Okay, I guess I think you have to have the distortion gain down to really hear a difference. Even still, there's not much to it. So if you're in the market to get yourself an electric guitar, but you're not looking to spend a lot of money, or if you're trying to figure out a good gift idea for a niece or nephew, or if you're just simply trying to dip your feet in the world of electric guitar, the Donner DST Combo Pack is definitely a good option. You get a fully functional guitar, you get a fully functional and incredibly loud amplifier that takes up about as much space as probably my headphones do on my desk. And you have that along with the guitar picks, extra strings, strap, a capo, a Allen wrench to adjust the truss rod if you need to do so, and pretty much everything that you need to get yourself started and to get yourself acclimated and make it easy for you to decide if you want to upgrade to other guitars in the future. And all for the incredibly reasonable price of $132 as retailed on their Amazon site. So look them up. I will leave a link down below for this guitar and this combo pack. I thank you guys for checking this demo out. I will be seeing you soon. If you're not following me on social media already, feel free to do so. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, consider going over to my Patreon page and supporting me over there. And other than that, I will see you guys next time. Stay well. Keep playing. Peace.